click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to this video we are with the chapter of microwave resonators in the subject microwave engineering so far in this chapter we have dealt with the parallel and series type of resonant circuits involving certain lumped elements and now we also have analyzed the short circuited and the open circuited conditions corresponding to the length of microwave transmission line in terms of its wavelength now in the previous video we have been introduced to what exactly the microwave cavities are and now the microwave cavities can be used for the resonance purpose the essential modifications we can make from the waveguides of rectangular and that of the circular type so very first of all in this video we shall start with the rectangular cavity resonator so let us see the details <music> So here we start with our topic rectangular cavity resonator. So as we know the rectangular waveguide, the definition of rectangular waveguide we can make as it is a hollow metallic tube and having the rectangular shape of cross section. So the hollow metallic tube will be extending from one end to the another end. So the cavity spacing that it is inside is closed at the top wall bottom wall and the two side walls whereas that tube is open at both the ends so this is a rectangular waveguide now when we get both the walls those were open for the microwave transmission in the rectangular waveguide closed with the short circuiting plate we obtained the rectangular cavity resonator the corresponding schematic diagram we can show here with the help of the three axes so as the name here we have rectangular we take the help of rectangular coordinate axis so let us say this is the axis x and this is the axis y those are a part of plane of the paper here whereas the third axis is mutually perpendicular to them and here we can show you the dashed line a tilted direction but actually perpendicular to the plane of the paper coming out and going inside it so let us imagine that this is the z direction now when we have the rectangular cross section aligned to both the x and y axis so that the breadth that is the larger dimension broader dimension with respect to the internal cross section for the x direction here and the smaller dimension that has been matched to that of y axis the alignment here so now here it will be the extent of rectangular waveguide initially we have so this is the diagram so here this is the top wall we can say whereas this is the bottom wall this is the side wall and this is another side wall so these top bottom and the two side walls are expected to be made up of perfect conductive material and these two are the openings of the rectangular waveguide so this is the rectangular waveguide now when these two walls are closed with short circuiting plates leaving inside a cavity of hollow space here it is called as rectangular cavity resonator so now closing both the ends while analysis of the rectangular waveguide we have shown the schematic with only one opening and the length was not taken to be a fixed value there we have understood the length to be of infinite length and then finally we have derived few of the equations corresponding to the wave propagation wave equations we have first of all taken and also considered the maxwell's equation for analysis purpose so as we need to account for closing of both the walls here the length the third dimension is to be taken into consideration so let us say the length of the resonator along the z direction we can denote by small d here so here we have the rectangular cavity resonator designated by the dimensions we can write it as 
a by b by d here so most of the time we take d to be the maximum in among the a b and d whereas b to be the minimum among the three a b and d so here this is our rectangular cavity resonator initially in the rectangular wave guide we considered the positive z direction to be direction of propagation of the wave so inside the hollow space we can make the excitation as we have been introduced in the chapter of wave guides to have either te mode or tm mode so that is definitely with the consideration of the wave equations having the harmonic variations along the z direction corresponding to the t or tm mode and also subject to the boundary conditions there so let us start the analysis for such a rectangular waveguide that has been converted to rectangular cavity resonator so whatever the electromagnetic field it will be there associated with the cavity resonator that should be satisfying the maxwell's equation so we know that there it is a set of four Maxwell's equation, the two related to the electric field and the next two related to that of the magnetic field here. Now, when we are having the microwave energy or the electromagnetic energy for the cavity resonator, we have to consider the boundary conditions. So according to the boundary condition, whatever the tangential component of electric field components will be there subject to the boundary will get vanished whereas the normal component of magnetic components or the magnetic field intensity will also be getting vanished so by applying the boundary conditions and considering the harmonic variations into the z direction the corresponding equations for the field components we can write as so for transverse electric mode now considering all the three dimension the te mode is designated as in the suffix we have te suffix m n p now here as it is transverse electric ez will be equal to zero but hz can be existed there so the x hz can be expressed in the form of here we have h suffix 0 z the peak component in multiplication to the cosine function over n pi x divided by small a into cosine of we have n pi y divided by small b and the another trigonometric function sine over p pi z divided by small d here so this is the very very important equation if you compare this equation to the te mode of propagation inside the rectangular waveguide you will come to see the only two trigonometric functions corresponding to the x and y but as we have closed both the ends for the waveguide with the fixed length denoted by small d we have the third trigonometric function also accounted for so in this expression we have small m represented here so this is the small m it should be and it holds the values 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on here so m represents the number of half wave cycles in the x direction whereas small n is there in the middle trigonometric function so small n holds 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on so it represents number of half wave cycles in the y direction and at last we have the representation of small p the newly introduce constant here that holds the value 1 comma 2 comma 3 4 and so on so here it represents number of half wave cycles into the z direction
so the thing that we had introduced while learning the rectangular waveguide that the field variation in the rectangular waveguide cross section is seen in terms of half wave cycles for the electric and that of the magnetic field vectors so it will be the same here for the rectangular cavity resonator also so this is the equation for te suffix mnp mode now let us discuss about the transverse magnetic mode so for transverse magnetic mode we can represent it as capital t capital m suffix m n p here so here as the name it is transverse magnetic hz component will be equal to zero but ez component can be existing here which can be given in terms of the equation e sub z is equal to capital e sub x zero z into sine as a function of m pi x divided by small a into sine as a function of n pi y divided by small b into the cosine of we have p pi z divided by small d here so here we have the meanings for m is equal to 1 2 3 4 and so on n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on and p is equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on whereas the meaning lies the same these are the corresponding number of half wave cycles for the field variation in the x y and z directions so just now we have represented the two equations corresponding to the transverse electric and the transverse magnetic modes of wave propagation inside the rectangular cavity resonator the difference between the two can be detailed by the equation that it is k square is equal to m pi by a that is squared and added with n pi by b squared and it is further added with we have p pi by small d squared here so here we have k to be the wave number here and now if for the lossless condition the lossless condition we can obtain when the dielectric material inside the cavity will be of lossless type so that time by having the representation of k square is equal to omega square mu epsilon we can obtain the resonant frequency for the rectangular cavity resonator so the resonant frequency can be denoted by f suffix r here and it is computed as 1 upon twice under root mu epsilon in multiplication to the square root that has small m by a squared added with small n by b squared and it is further added with small p by small d which is also squared so this equation of the resonant frequency it is very very important and helpful to solve problems based on to the rectangular cavity resonator and this will be applicable to the both the modes te sub x m n p also t m sub x m n and p here now when we have the two dimensions denoted small a small b and small d here so in that case we mostly have b to be smaller than d and to be smaller than a also in such a situation the te101 mode of propagation is called as the dominant mode here in the last lecture we have already made it very clear that that particular mode of wave propagation offering the lowest possible value of resonant frequency is called as dominant mode so for the rectangular waveguide what we have the combination for mnp te101 is the dominant mode now discussing about as we have closed both the ends of the rectangular waveguide with the help of short circuited plates how to have excitation of the rectangular cavity resonator so mostly the excitation techniques are the same that we used to have for the rectangular waveguides so in the cross section if you 
see the schematic where the broader and smaller dimensions we have represented in between to the cross section we have this reference line and the field variation for let us say electric field is having a maxima at the center whereas the field variation for the magnetic line is like this so let us say this is representing h and this is representing e here so in that case one type of excitation is to have the connectivity with the help of rf coaxial coupling loop or coupling cable we can say so here it is the input another way of having the excitation can be given with the help of the schematic diagram that i draw so in this diagram let us say the same is the cross section here again we have a reference line and the variation of electric and that of the magnetic field are like this and here it is the insertion that we have been making at the middle from the upper wall or the top wall of the rectangular cavity resonator so here also we can have the input so the excitation from this wall or excitation from this wall will differ into either te or tm mode of wave propagation in the rectangular cavity resonator so by the next lecture we shall be having a practice to determine the various parameters confined to the rectangular cavity resonator so it will be the topic problem one on rectangular cavity resonator so we shall be continuing with the same chapter i hope you are definitely enjoying learning the topics like this for more information of the concepts related to microwave engineering you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you